previously on Virtual Teen Classic Graphic Novel Reading. Now, we're also going to do the magnifying glass. And all the slides ready to go. And just as a reminder, with Mouse Volume 2, A Survivor's Tale by Art Stevenson. So, second page, and this is the actual, this is actually the back cover of the book, and it shows you uh, some details about uh, where they are uh, in New York and the, uh, the area of Auschwitz, which is where, uh, where Vladek ended up. Uh, but that's the back cover, New York, the two places that, that the story takes place, father and son talking in New York. What are your plans now, Pop? We'll walk over here to the Pines Hotel and then back. I mean, in general, now that Mala is gone. Maybe we'll together stay to the end of the summer here. It's so beautiful. I told you, Francois. I told you, Francois, and I can only stay through the weekend. Right, we're going to take a break from here. Now, you know what? We're just going to continue. So then, when you go back, I also will go. What have I here to stay all alone? And then, eh, maybe you'll want with me in Queens to stay. 
to have you with me, it's always a pleasure. Remember my house. It's also your house, too. I'm sorry, Pop. I don't think it would work out. I mean, we've got your... you. We've got our own place to live, and yes, yes, you don't have to answer now, only to think of it. Um, can I ask you more about your past, about Auschwitz? Of course, darling. To me, you can ask anything. Well, what happened when you and mom arrived there and were separated? When we came, they pushed in one way the men, somewhere else the women. Out! I waved very fast goodbye to Anya. Okay, so this this thing here has done me in. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so let's continue on. All right. My magnifying glass went away, folks, so we're just going to go with it like this for now. But you never understand. Never. Anya and I were separated. No? Never Anya and I were separated. No? We came to a big hall, and they shouted at us. Get undressed. Leave your valuables. Your valuables, line up, schnell. It was at that time, still, with my friend Mendelbaum. I'm going to get that magnifying glass back. Hold on. Time out, folks. Okay. Magnifier, come back. Okay. Okay, and screen share again. Where are we? Here we go. And there we are. Screen share. No cooperation there, eh? Let's see. There we go. There's the share button. All right, back at it. It's easy being me, don't you? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Get me out of the way. Okay, and we're back here. All right. Okay, so, okay, so let's see. Get dressed, leave, leave your valuables, line up, schnell. It was at that time still with my, I was at that time still with my friend Mendelbaum. No, the war put us apart, but always before and after we were together. Not so like with Mala. Auschwitz, Pop. Tell me about Auschwitz. Auschwitz was a town called Oz. Auschwitz was it was in a town called Azizim. Before the war, I came often here to sell my textiles, and now I came again. We came to a big hall, and they shouted at us, "Get dressed, leave your valuables, line up, schnell!" I was at that time still with my friend Mendelbaum. They took from us our papers, our clothes, and our hair. 
what's going to happen to us? Don't worry. We were cold and we were afraid. If they brought you here, they'll put you to work. They're not ready to kill you yet. What about our wives? Our... Shut up, Yids! To the bathhouse, quick! Everywhere we had to run. So, like joggers, they ran us to the sauna. It's freezing. Just thank God it's not gas. Here, it was the live. It was the live showers, not the dead gas showers. What we heard some sometimes rumors. In the snow, they threw us. They threw us to prisoners. They threw us to prisoners' clothing. Snell, snell, snell. Snell means hurry, in case you guys didn't know that from the old TV shows. They never even looked on what size they threw. Excuse me, these shoes are too small. Maybe now they'll fit. The shoes were wood shoes. I was the lucky one. Everything fitted. Everything fitted me a little. The shirt was torn and too big for me. The shirt was torn and too big for me. They registered us in. They took from us our names. And here, they put me a number. All around was a smell so terrible, I can't explain. Sweet-ish, so like rubber burning and fat. Uncle, uncle! When we came inside the gates, someone ran to us from far away. Here was Mendel. Here was Abraham, Mendelbaum's nephew. So, Uncle, you made it. You ended up here too. You told us to come. You wrote us about how happy you were and hungry, that we should join you right away. Well, here we are, hungry, huh? Ha! The poles who arranged our escape understood Yiddish, so they knew you were waiting to hear if I was safe. In Bielko, the Poles dictated that letter while the Gestapo held a pistol up to my head. What could I do? They'd have shot me then and there. Well, so here's our hungry, and there's only one way out of here for all of us, through those chimneys. Abraham didn't see, I didn't see again. I think he came out the chimney. But I saw once the Poles who betrayed us. The Germans didn't need them, so they, they finished also in Auschwitz. We newcomers were put inside a room. Old timers passed and said all the same. 
You see those chimneys? Okay. So I was more sad. I was worn and shivering and crying a little. Nobody even looked. But from another room, someone approached over. Why are you crying, my son? Should I be happy? Let me see your arm. Am I at a carnival? He was a priest. Hmm. Your number starts with 17. In Hebrew, that's Kim Yon Yen Tov. 17 is a very good omen. He wasn't Jewish, but very intelligent. It ends with 13, the age of a Jewish the age a Jewish boy becomes a man. And look, added together, it totals 18. That's Kai, the Hebrew number of life. I can't know if I'll survive this hell, but I'm certain you'll come through all this alive. I started to believe. I tell you, he put another life in me. And whenever it was very bad, I looked and said, yes, the priest was right. It totals 18. Whew. That guy was a saint. Yes, I never saw him again. For me, it was hard here, but for, for my men, for my friend Mendelbaum, it was more hard. In, in Sosnovich, everyone knew Mendelbaum. He was older, as me, nice, a very rich man. Can I use your spoon, Vladik? Oh. Oops. The wrong way here. Here we go. But now, in Auschwitz, Mendelbaum was a mess. His pants were too, were big like for two people, and he had not even a piece of string to make a belt. He had all day to hold them with one hand. One shoe, his foot was too big to go in. This also he had to hold so he could find maybe with whom to exchange it. One shoe was like a boat, but this at least he could wear. It was winter. And everywhere, he had to go around with one foot onto the snow. Can I use your spoon, Vladik? Of course, but where's yours? I dropped it. And by the time I bent down, someone stole it. For a spoon, you could get half a day's bread. I spilled most of my soup, too. When I asked for more, they beat me. I hold on to my bowl and my shoe falls down. I pick up the shoe and my pants fall down. But what can I do? I only have two hands. My God, please God, help me find a piece of string and a shoe that fits. But here God didn't come. We were all on our own. So Mendelbaum and I were in a bed 
that were two in a bed. We didn't know why, since it was since it was spaces left. But a day after, they pushed in a shipment of maybe four hundred more Jews there. It was room hardly to move, only to go down to the toilet. It was fifteen minutes walking on the on the unlucky ones sleeping on the floor. And coming back, I couldn't find again where is my bed. In the in the barrack was a gopo, a supervisor. He was screaming and kicking whatever he could. Line up in rows of five. Stand straight. He was also a prisoner, a peasant from the German part of Poland. Now lie on your bellies, quick. Stand up, lie down, stand up, faster. Lie down! He did such sport all day, kicking, hitting, yelling, till, till some dropped dead and more. One time, this block supervisor started screaming on us. Who knows English? Raise your hand. You should raise your hand, Vladik. No. I don't want to get too close to his stick. Besides, look at all the hands up already. Many French Jews here knew to speak English. We took them apart and sent them back soon. Who knows English and Polish? Now it was very few hands, so I approached. It was eight or nine of us. Each had to speak a few words. There is the pen. The pen is in the table. Next. When I heard the others speak, I saw I had a chance. I spoke only English to him. For Polish, I had a good, I had a good English. Yes, I gave private lessons of English when I lived then in Zetstowska. You managed to get the, Ber the Berlitz books here? You studied already to, to conjugate verbs? And he wanted to learn English here. And he kept me aside the rest. Listen, there are too many prisoners here. The SS will line you up all, will line all you up tomorrow. Be sure to stand on the far left. In the morning, the SS chose who to take for the day to work. Weak ones, they put on the side to take away forever. Before they came to me, they took, they took enough. I kept, I kept close to Mendelbaum and we went back safe inside. The cop, the couple pushed those remaining to clean up in the block. Wait, Spiegelman, you come with me. Everyone they called by number, but me, he called my name. Sit here. I'll be back soon. Here I saw rolls. I saw eggs, meat, coffee. All the table full. You know what it was to see such things? It must be, it must be it's his breakfast. See how happy he was? How happy he has it here? 
I was afraid to look. I was so hungry. I could grab all of it. What are you waiting for? Sit down and eat. This food, it was for me. This food, it was for me. I ate, ate as he watched. Then I taught him a couple of hours and we spoke a little. But why are you studying English? I speak German as well as a Polish, as well as Polish. That's why. A capo. That's why I'm a capo. Otherwise, I'd be nothing like you. Now, the Allies are bombing the right. This war. If, if they win this war, it will be worth something to know English. Well, that's enough for me today. Come with me. Take off all your clothes. Choose things that fit. So I took myself clothes like tailored. I also got a pair of real shoes, not wood, but leather. Always I was handsome, but with everything fitted, I looked like a million. So, are you all set? Yes, sir. But I have one more more favor to ask. Could, could I also take this extra pair of shoes, a belt, and a spoon for what? You Jew, you've only been here a few days and you're ready to do business? I have an account for every pair. I have to account for every pair of shoes in here. I, I don't I don't want to make trouble. You've been so kind to me. It was for my friend. I explained him everything about Mendelbaum. Well, I could lose the belt and I could lose the belt and spoon, but bring me your friend's old shoes tomorrow, or else. I'm telling you, that was amazing. I was amazing well off. I ran to Mendelbaum. Lodic, you look like a general. Ha, not quite, but I've been lucky and I didn't forget you. Look, I got you your own spoon. A spoon? Thank you, Vladik. Thank you. And here's a belt. Not just string, a real belt. Oh, my God. And one more thing. A pair of wooden shoes that will fit you. <laughs> Sob. My God. My God. My God. It's a miracle, Vladik. God sent shoes through you was so happy he was crying and I started also crying with him. He was so happy with this and the capo knew Mendelbaum was my friend so he led him also alone. How long I could I kept him. But a few days later the Germans chose him to take him away to work. Nobody could help this. So I was finished with Mendelbaum. I never saw him more again. So you don't know what happened to Mendelbaum? He got killed or he died. I know they finished him. Maybe on the walk to work, a guard grabbed his cap away. Go get your cap, quick! So what could he do? He ran to pick it up, and the guard shot him for trying to escape. The guard got a congratulations and a few days vacation for stopping the escape. 
I don't know if this was how it was with Mendelbaum, only that very often they did so. They wanted only to finish everyone out. It was very hard work and very little food. They, they kicked him and hit him in his head because he couldn't work fast enough. Or maybe he got sick. So they put him first in the hospital and then in the oven. You see how they did? And I had still happy there. For me, it was not yet the end. Newcomers were afraid of me. I looked like a big shot, and the couple kept me close. They'll want 200 workers tomorrow. I've only got 180 still registered here. You better hide in my room. Of the group, when I arrived, only I remained. Lodic, what was your profession before you were brought here? I worked in a lot of different businesses. Why? I've kept you here in the quarantine block as long as I can. You'll have to be assigned out to a work crew. Skilled workers get better treatment. I can do anything once I'm shown how. In the ghetto, I worked in a wood shop. In Sosnovic, I was a tinsmith. A tinsmith. I'll see what I can do. Always around us, which they were they were build building. So the roofs, they needed good tin men. It was not really, I was not really a tin man, but I knew a little. It's those of it, I was in a tin shop registered to get a safe work passport, and I watched how they worked. Uh-huh, you told me what I wanted to ask you about, though, is what happened to mom while you stop. We must turn quick and go by this road to come to the pines. Huh? In this way, the hotel guard can't see us. And we can sit on their patio. It's pretty there to sit. I come almost every day this way. Sometimes I get free dancing lessons or they have for the guests free bingo and prizes. Downstairs is a gym with a steam room and a whirlpool. Maybe I can take you in there tomorrow. Uh, no thanks. Aren't you afraid you'll get caught trespassing? <laughs> From our bungalows, everybody comes here always or to the Brickman's Hotel up the road. I like better the pines, only it's that in the gym here, you can't have a locker without giving a room key. Look, they're giving now cards for bingo. Now, uh, you, want, you want to play? Uh, uh, I'll put in a new tape and we can continue. I won here bingo game one time. The winner got a prize over to his room. Only it was, I had no room. Behind me sat a young lady was so disappointed that she lost. She had just one number away. So I gave to her my card and said, I don't care for such prizes. You go up and be the winner. She was happy. Didn't you tell her you weren't the guest here? Why to tell? This wasn't her business. You know, in town is a bingo place. 
50 cents a card. Mala liked sometimes to go. And I said to her, for what? For the coffee. They, for the coffee they give, they give after? Bingo, we can play at the Pines. And better coffee we have at home. B5. G22. Bingo! <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's see. Oh, my friends, that's the end of the first chapter of Volume 2 of Mouse. Let me uh, quit the share screen here and we'll go ahead and. I can, oh, let me turn off this, this magnifying glass too. Turn that off. There we are. Ah, all right. So, that's, I hope that was worth your time. I know it was for me. Interesting chapter. Again, you got to pay attention to the flip flop in between the story being told and the story itself about survival in Auschwitz. My friends, we're going to call it a day here. So I hope that you'll join me on the next one where we do chapter two, which was Auschwitz. Uh, yes, 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 indeed. Let's see. Yeah. Time. Lies is the next chapter. And I don't know if you recall what year that Vladek ended up in, in Auschwitz. It was 1944. The camps were liberated in 45. So as you can see by that timeline, it's going to get interesting. So again, I look forward to seeing everybody next time. And until then, stay safe and take good care. Bye-bye now.